Good morning friends and welcome to Forex Baptist Church. We're so happy that you can join us this morning. Thank you to everyone who has kept in touch throughout the week and has helped us keep connected to you all. We're going to start with a time of prayer, we're going to move into some sung worship and then we're going to hear from our children's talk and from Phil. But first let's take a, t um, a moment to still our hearts and enjoy a moment of quiet before we start. Lord, we pray that this service that we're about to watch this morning, that we might get to know you, that we might see and hear you in the songs that we sing and in the words that we hear, that we would be renewed and we would feel empowered to bring all that is weighing on us to you, that we might feel lightened by your peace and by your love. Although we're still separated across our community, Lord, we want to thank you that we are still able to join together and worship you in this way this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
praise you. We want to thank you that it is your blood in our veins and your breath in our lungs and that we are your children. That you're here with us no matter what and we have nothing to fear from this world when you are with us. Lord be with us this morning as we learn more about you, more about what you're saying to us and more about how to be like you. Yeah, Lord, we're here to worship you this morning and just we ask that you're with us. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Yeah. 
together I've got all the colours of the rainbow one two three four five oh no I've got two greens that's not right is that right hmm. um right I'm sure I've got ten right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i've got ten pens do you like my pens i keep them in this pot and then when i'm doing my colors i can do all the colors of the rainbow that's seven and then i've got extras i've got dark green as well as light green that makes one more that's eight and dark blue that makes nine and an extra purple one that makes ten it would be awful if I lost one, wouldn't it? I have to look after them in this pot. I don't like losing things. Have you ever lost anything? Sometimes you can lose things and you get really upset about it, can't you? Hmm. This story today is about a lady who lost something. Let's listen to it. The Lost Coin once there was a woman who had ten silver coins, said Jesus. Sometimes she would count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten coins. One day something was wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine nine only nine where could the other coin be she lit her lamp so she could see under the furniture she even swept her house looking for the coin suddenly she saw it she picked it up and called her friends be happy with me she said i have found my lost coin God is like that woman. He wants to find his people who are not following him. They are lost from him. He wants them to follow him again. Then they will be found and God will be happy. Did you enjoy that story about the lost coin? 
In the days of Jesus, so I'm told, some ladies had chains and they had coins on their chains and maybe it was a sign of how many years they would got married for or something like that. So those coins were really valuable to that lady. <gasps> Do you like my necklace? Can you see my necklace? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've got nine, that's funny isn't it, I've got nine purple stones on my necklace, it's not very valuable though so that's okay, but on my finger I've got some valuable rings, they're not that valuable but they're very special to me, they're special to me because they're my wedding rings, that's my wedding ring, can you see it, and that's my engagement ring. I lost my engagement ring once. It was terrible. I had to search everywhere for it. I was really worried. And then when I found it, I felt like having a party. <laughs> Do you want to see something else that's really special to me? In this box, I've got a very special gold cross. That was a special wedding present for me. And I've been married for 30 years. So that's a lot of years, isn't it? I've had that for 30 years. It would be terrible for me to lose it. I would like to look after it and keep it forever and ever because it's really special to me. So the story today was about the lady losing the coins on her necklace and they were really special to her. And so Jesus told that story to explain what God feels like when he loses one of his children. God loves everybody so much. His heart is for all the children and he loves all of us, you and me and all the grown-ups. And if any of us get lost, God would cry and would search and search until we come back to him. So that's the message that Jesus wanted us to know about today. Now, for our craft today, we've got uh, something a bit different, I suppose. It's a bit like a sort of treasure box, I suppose, really. It's made from a paper plate. <laughs> now, it's actually made from two paper plates. So I don't know if you've got any paper plates, but it would be great if you did have paper plates and they don't cost much to buy. Now, first of all, we got the paper plate and we sponge painted it. It's quite complicated today because we had lots of stages. So we sponge painted the paper plate and then we had to cut a heart shape out because we're still thinking about God's heart and how much he loves people and then we had to stick the one paper plate to the other paper plate and it made a sort of hole inside can you see that <laughs> and then inside look we've got lots and lots of hearts rainbow colored hearts now, we haven't done this yet, but what we're going to do in our family is we're going to think of all the people that are special to us and we're going to write their names on the hearts and put them inside the paper plate and that's going to be a bit like God's heart. We've decorated the plate as well with lots of hearts and jewels and glitter and this is another one. This one says, welcome to the Father's heart. And then we open it up and inside are all the hearts. And we're going to write on them all the people who are special, special to us and special to God. I hope you enjoy making this craft. It takes a little bit more time but it's really good fun and it means that you've got a special place 
to keep those hearts in. When you have that, you can remember how much God loves you and how much God loves me. That's how much we've been talking about this for a few weeks, haven't we? And so we've done the lost son. Do you remember that one from last week? And now we've done the lost coin. They're very special stories and we can keep them in our hearts forever. So enjoy those stories and enjoy your craft. Have a great week. Bye bye. This is the point in our service where we'd usually take our offering and as we're not able to do that in the normal way we put details of how you can give to our church on the screen. We want to say a huge thank you for supporting us in this way. Everything you, that you give allows us to continue to serve others through the work of Forex Baptist Church in our community and further afield. So let's pray for our offering. We thank you God that we are so blessed in everything that we have everything that is available to us and everything that we take for granted. We pray for a giving heart, for the desire to give more than we can afford and we pray for your guidance and wisdom to be able to use these offerings to help those who have so much less than we do. We pray that your abundance of life and love would reach everyone who needs it. Amen. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 51 verses 3 to 5. The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there, songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Listen to me, my people, hear me, Israel, for my law will be proclaimed and my justice will become a light to the nations. My mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. My strong arm will bring justice to the nations. All distant lands will look to me and wait in hope for my powerful arm. Well, good morning, church. Uh, today, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to take a, a bit of a detour from where we've been going currently. If you've been with us on this journey up till now, you'll know that we've spent the majority of our time in John's Gospel. and We've been working our way through uh, the life of Jesus. And up till last week, we were at the point where Jesus, walking through the streets with his disciples, his friends, he's explaining what's about to happen, bursts into prayer, and then at the end, uh, he reaches the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives. And at that moment, uh, that ends and concludes chapter 17. And then we would then be moving into chapter 18, which marks the final essential chapters of John's Gospel. There is a distinct shift as we now go from Jesus telling them about what's going to happen and then the events to which he has foretold now begin to work through with the, uh, the trial of Jesus, eventually the death of Jesus and then the resurrection of Jesus. So we thought if we were to press pause at any point during this that this would be the most ideal time to do that. So today's sermon essentially is going to be us exploring just a little bit about what God has been saying to us and through us as a church over the last few years. So if you've been with us on this journey, much of this you will know. Perhaps a few bits and pieces might be a little bit new. But if you are new to us as a church, uh, maybe you know just during this whole period of lockdown, you suddenly found yourself logging in. Uh, to hear what God is saying through us as a church. And I just want to kind of explain just a little bit about the journey that we've been on uh, and the journey that we are currently on and where we feel that God is calling us to and what this new chapter for us looks like. So as you're aware, um, uh, we as, as a church are Four Oaks Baptist Church. We are a Baptist church uh, in the Four Oaks Mere Green area. 
So, but just to kind of rewind essentially back three years, and I, I can't really talk much beyond that purely because, well, my journey with Four Oaks Baptist Church only began three years ago. But uh, over the decades, uh, and, and actually to be fair, our, our church has been going since the latter half of uh, the 1700s. Um, our church has fluctuated in numbers on and off uh, throughout the decades uh, with times uh, with it being over a hundred people uh, at, its, uh, at its greater moments. But by the time that uh, uh, three years came about the birth, uh, I suppose, of, of where we are at the moment, our church was in a very different position uh, with about 20 to 25 people, uh, majority aged 70 and above uh, with one person in their 20s um, uh, and the, the, the rest uh, kind of in that older bracket. Now the church had a little bit of money in its bank account and uh, after a long conversation uh, decided they've essentially got two options. One is that they uh, continue down their current trajectory and in doing so would just mean eventually the doors would close which would be the death of our church. Or the other alternative was that we could go down the direction of a rebirth and with that that equally uh, would be painful. So no matter what direction we went as a church it would be painful. Painful if we go down a new birth because well things would have to change. The way that we do things would have to change uh, and that this change would have to happen in order to be able to enable uh, a bigger change to come about that would bring younger people into our church and after a time of prayer and, th and, and thanksgiving and thought eventually the church decided that, that was the route that they wanted to go down which uh, brought uh, myself but that was a huge leap of faith on the church's behalf not really knowing what was going to happen next but there was a crucial word from God that was spoken uh, a couple of years before that that time came about and that word was this God said I will rebuild my church note he will rebuild the church not us as a church not bringing in a young minister who was going to rebuild the church no it is that God would rebuild his church and it was that word that has been ricocheting its way through and as we as a church have then began to walk this journey together there's been a real sense of excitement as we're watching God literally rebuilding his church. Now if you fast forward uh, three years later we're in a really exciting moment and the, it is this sense of excitement for us as a church which is why I want to talk today. So uh, we were looking to put together a prayer diary uh, and so we were putting together all the various different names of those who worship with us regularly. So that's that we see on a, at least a monthly basis. And we noted that those numbers were actually just over 70 people. So just over half of that in the 70 and above bracket and just over half of that uh, in the under 75 bracket. And that in itself is so exciting. Uh, in, the, in the last three years, that although we have lost people along the journey, uh, people that I consider as friends, and that's been a really painful time at the same, but at the same time equally, that we have grown. So uh, if we just look at just the plus 70s group, that that group in itself has multiplied. But the idea that we've got you know, 35 people that are in the under uh, 70 age bracket. That is incredible. And that's not including children. We've got a really thriving children's work. Uh, and, and thanks to those uh, that are working behind the scenes to, to make that happen. So for us as a church, this is really exciting because we are literally watching God rebuilding his church. And so uh, for us, one of the, uh, the things that we spent a little bit of time looking at as a church is, well, this is a different time that we're in. And, and what is God telling us uh, about who he is? What is he telling us about who we are as a church? And so we sat down together uh, as a church and began to just, you know, 
dream? What would we like to see the church be like? What is God telling us that he would like his church to be? What is it that makes essentially our church different to other churches? Uh, what is the mandate that sits on us as a church? What makes us different to the church of 10 years ago? These are things that we began to dream through. And as we did, this is essentially what we're calling our vision statement. And so this is what we feel that God is calling us to. Now, some of this is just that. If a vision statement is something that we're achieving, that's not a vision statement. That's us just saying this is where we currently are. So some of this is that this is where we are aspiring to go. This is where we're uh, hoping to be able to reach. But this is essentially what we feel that God is calling us to. So I'm going to just briefly explain this because I don't think we understand the gravity of it until we look at the time that we're currently in. Okay, so let's take a look, 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 look at this. If you want to read this, this is actually on our church's website. But I'm, I'm going to explain just a little bit about this now. We are a community of spirit felt followers of Jesus Christ, rooted in God's word, attempting to do life together in a manner that is fragrant to all, in order to visibly make a difference in the families and the communities that God has placed us in. That our church should be a beacon of hope and a place of welcome to all, providing a space that can be called home. We believe that Jesus came to mend the brokenhearted and to proclaim God's victory over depression and oppression and to welcome all who would respond into the royal family of God himself and that he has called us, his church, to join him in this adventure through both word and deed until Christ returns. I don't know about you, but that just of itself sounds excited. So we are a community of believers who are rooted in God's word, who are desperate to see God's work through us by the power of his Holy Spirit. So this is who we are and this is why we spend so much of our Sunday sermons essentially rooted in scripture. And I very rarely preach like this in that I'm, I'm, I'm exploring an idea as opposed to exploring scripture. Um, I mean, that's because I, I genuinely believe that we are to be rooted in God's word and, and that we are to visibly make a difference in the families and the communities to which we are placed. And I think that that is one of the most exciting aspects of, of what is happening right now. You see, we are beginning to see uh, the, the effect that we're having on our community as our community becomes suddenly aware of the fact that we actually exist and that we're doing good. This is exciting. But God's placed us in the family uh, that we're in for specific reasons. Uh, and, uh, and, and I just am really excited to watch this work its way out. This idea that we are a beacon of hope and a place of welcome. One of the things that we've noted is as many people have started coming to our church over the last few years the people who have some who have known God and walked away but in the last kind of couple of years have just found themselves gravitating back and have found themselves in our church and have felt this just sense of that they're coming home to others who had never stepped foot in our church who started to worship with us have suddenly found that this is a place to where they feel welcomed that this is like that they're coming home even though they've never been with us before you see this is something that we can't help but just feel a little bit excited by like god's doing something and this is incredible now to you we're aware that uh, you may have just come on this journey just recently with us. And you need to know that whether you live in our community or not, whether it's even possible for you to attend our church in real time uh, as we go back in uh, hopefully the months to come uh, or not, uh, we just want you to know that you are loved and welcomed and that we are privileged to be walking this journey with you. So that's a little bit about kind of who we are and what we feel that God is calling us to. And there are parts of that, uh, that that we're still kind of aspiring to work towards. But this is the beauty of the journey that we're on. So 
That takes us uh, to pretty much uh, the beginning of lockdown. Uh, and although we've had multiple other events that have happened along that journey, I want to explore a couple of prophetic words that have been spoken uh, about this time that we currently find ourselves in. And I want to do that in the light of what we felt a few years back that God was calling us as a church to be. And suddenly all of this starts to come together and it's really exciting. Uh, and I want for you to kind of essentially just own that level of excitement yourself as we're looking to go, God, what are you doing? What what, what is our future God and what is this about? So uh, just at the beginning of uh, lockdown, just before it actually happened, um, uh, we as a leadership team got a, uh, a prophetic word from somebody who I've at this point yet to meet. Uh, and I have to say that in itself is a little bit, um, you know, interesting even of itself. But just this word. Um, that was given uh, just inspired us as a leadership team uh, to be able to kind of walk this journey. Now, bearing in mind, uh, we got this uh, on the 18th of March, right? So that was, you know, we, lockdown was announced on the 23rd and came into being on the 24th of March. That was my 40th birthday. That is, people are never going to remember the 24th of March because Phil Wilkes turned 40. No, that was the day that lockdown came into being. This word came to us before that. So, and explaining just a little bit about what was God, what God is about to be doing. So, um, I'm going to uh, walk us through uh, this word. And then once we get to the end of that, I'm going to explain what God's then been doing in this time period. And then I'm going to finish by exploring uh, the last word that I feel that God has spoken uh, to myself in regards to us as a church and how that fits in with a particular prophetic dream that was months ago that only now uh, that we're beginning to realize just the gravity of that. So put your seatbelt on. We're in for a journey. So the major crux of this is from uh, the book of Esther, uh, from chapter four, verse 15. Um, and in chapter four of Esther, we meet a character uh, who uh, has found herself in the royal courts uh, and um, that a massive atrocity is about to take place that will wipe the Jewish people off the map. Um, and yet she seems to have found herself in the royal courts and being Jewish herself, the question is, why? Why is she there? And uh, a particular word is spoken to her by her uncle that maybe God has placed her there for such a time as this. So, for such a time as this. I have prepared you for what is coming. So that is us as a church, us as a leadership, us as, as, as a group of believers. We're, we're in this really odd place, but do you know what? This is what the, word, what the word says. I have prepared you for what is coming. This is a time that I have been waiting for and that you have been praying for. Now, my people will cry out and I will answer. Now you can pray. Pray in a new way. My Holy Spirit will give you the words, the groans, the tears. It is not just about life here. It's not just about this kingdom, but it is about my kingdom. Things that were planned to harm, those things I can use for good. I will use these times for my kingdom. So in your anxiety, pray. In your joyful times, pray. Ask people who you would never normally ask if they would like you to pray for them, even if you can't go and see them. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the evil rulers and authorities of this unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. You have said to many that you trust me, so now is the chance to go to new places with that trust. You will experience me in new ways during this. I will sustain you and comfort you, equip you and give you the words of knowledge and insight on what to do at such a time as this. It is my burden to carry, not yours. Come to me, 
get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Be wise. Take care of yourselves. But no, for such a time as this, I knew it was coming. I go before you and I walk with you. I have equipped you and prepared my church, my people, you, for such a time as this. I don't know about you, but I can't listen to that without feeling just some sense of excitement. Like God's doing something and I'm excited by what he's doing. The idea that actually he goes before us, that he knew this was coming and that he's been preparing us for such a time as this. You know, if I look at uh, over the last three years, the, the people to which God has brought into our church, we would have never have been able to weather um, this three years ago. Not at all. Heck, go back four years, not a chance. We would look as a church completely different to what we do now. God has been on this journey with us, kind of bringing the right people in at the right time for the right reasons. And so here we are today with a really unique opportunity in front of us. So as I said, if we were to be preaching normally, say if this pandemic was not happening at the moment and we were not in lockdown and we were allowed to worship together in churches and therefore we hadn't been putting out any of these videos. At most, if I was lucky and everybody all turned up at church at the same time, I might be preaching to about 70 people, which means that the, the word of hope uh, and, and the beauty of the message of what God is calling to us would reach 70 people at most. Maybe if somebody happened to stumble across our, our website and actually listen to some of our online talks, but not at the level that this is happening at now. So we're in a really unique position. You know, if you look at the amount of views that our average service gets from most Sunday services, well over 400 views. At most, uh, the last one I, I, I was looking at, over 1,200 views. Uh, I can't even imagine if the latter number, 400, if 400 people turn up on that celebration service when we're finally allowed to go back to church, and wouldn't that be amazing? We're all allowed to be in there together. 400 people suddenly turn up on our doorstep. Health and safety wouldn't permit us to even have the service because I can probably fit about 120 people in our church before it's a hazard. Yet here we are on a week by week basis and this message is reaching an audience I could never have manufactured. We as a church could never have hoped to see. God is doing something and it is exciting. And as we are speaking uh, just these words of hope, these words of, of a future in God and, and what Jesus has done and the, the victory that he's won, this is incredible. So when you begin to look at this, we find ourselves in a place where we can't help but be excited. Now, if you talk to pretty much anybody in our church at the moment, there is just this sense of excitement and it's rumbling its way through. If you were to be uh, uh, reading our church WhatsApp group, uh, just there is an incredible sense of like, wow, this is, we're excited. We as a church are excited. And although our doors are closed, in some ways our doors have never been more open. And so this is for us as a church, we're actually quite excited about what the future looks like and the best part of this is it feels like god's excited too so the bible verse that we looked at today out of isaiah 51 now bearing in mind as i said explained where we were as a church uh, three years ago this verse speaks into that moment but also speaks into our moment here and today so uh, isaiah 51 verse 3 the Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. So in this, I'm kind of looking at this as though actually 
God's talking to us as a church and saying that God will comfort us uh, and will have pity on our ruins. Her desert will bloom like Eden, her barrenness, her barren wilderness like a garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, Israel, for my law will be proclaimed and my justice will become a light to the nations. My mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. My strong arm will bring justice to the nations. All the distant lands will look to me and wait in hope for my powerful arm. This sense God is doing something and we're in the midst of this level of just incredible excitement. So this leads us to the next word that we got. Now I explained this at our church members meeting and I think a little bit, uh, some people heard the message and I think actually misinterpreted it that this is for, for Nick and I, it's not at all. I, this is very much, I, we kind of got the sense that God is saying to us as a church, the following. Okay, so uh, this, uh, based on Isaiah 51, um, is the idea of pitching tents but not building houses. And I'm going to explain just a little bit uh, about that. But the word that I felt God speak to us then was this. So, to us as Four Rocks Baptist Church, you are right to be excited by where you are. You are right to rejoice in what I am doing. But do not lay foundations, for this is not a place to build. I am about to move you onto something greater and something bigger. You are not to grow comfortable where you are, because we are about to move. And already you realise that I am moving and I'm using this worldwide catastrophe to bring about a need and an awareness of me to those who have been running away from me. But I'm going to turn the tide. The church has been emptying for decades and that's already changing. But what you see as a victory is nothing compared to what I am about to do. Prepare, pray, and make space, for I am on the move, and I want you to join me on this adventure. As I heard God speaking that to me, uh, you know, a few weeks back in uh, end of May, just got this incredible sense that actually God is about to do something incredible. And we are looking at our numbers to which the views get and we can't help but feel a little bit like, you know, this is, this is almost too good to be true. Wouldn't this be amazing if this is what our church looked like? And I just got this sense that God's saying, church, you are right to be excited. But where we are now is nothing compared to where we are going. And that sense, just again back uh, in Isaiah 51, of that his mercy and his justice are coming, that his salvation is on the way. His salvation is on the way. And, and church, I just want to you know, say to you, as, as we explore what God is doing through the power of his spirit here at the moment, that we've got an incredible adventure ahead of us. And that if we take God up on his invitation to join him on this adventure, life's gonna look different, church is gonna look different and how we engage with our community is going to be different. But the three things that I felt that God was explaining that is our responsibility in this. The first one is, to prepare. Second one is to pray. And the third one is to make space. So first of all, prepare. I think we as a church need to prepare ourselves for the fact, you know what? Church is going to look different. 
And as we begin to find more and more people coming in, that actually we've got to be in a place where we are ready to receive, that we are ready to disciple, that we are ready to go forwards with others into the adventure that God's got. So there's a kind of like sense of of preparing, but there's also a sense of preparing that we ourselves need to up our spiritual game. This idea that, you know what, if we're going to do this, if we're going to do this, then we need to be in a stronger place spiritually. And and as much as I can say this from the front, it's, it's your responsibility at home to begin to explore that with God. The second one is to pray. And I think that um, one of the biggest things that we as a church over the last few years have really taken a huge uh, kind of uh, responsibility of, of prayer. We kind of grabbed hold of this. Um, so across our normal week before lockdown, there is a 6.30 prayer meeting on a Monday morning. Um, horrendous time. But nevertheless, prayer meeting on a Monday, on a Tuesday evening, which we're still managing to keep up by the wonders of technology. But at 7.30 on a Tuesday evening will be another prayer meeting. There's another prayer meeting on a Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock. And then on a Thursday, there was another prayer meeting at 6.30 a.m. And then on a Sunday before the service at 9.45 was another prayer meeting. And, And this is not just for us to keep going through the motions, but this is to seek God's face for us to pray and say lord may it be may your kingdom come soon may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven this sense of us just saying god we need our church to grow we long to see that but we know that we don't have the skill set to do that but we know that you do we long to see our families on fire for god we long to see our communities come to know jesus as the lord and savior and we can't do that but we know that you can that's what prayer is about And that's about us kind of approaching God and saying, Lord, we need to see this happen. We want to see this happen. You've promised it. You've said it's going to happen. Lord, let it be so. And then this idea of making space. And I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last few weeks, we've begun to look at that. What does that mean for us? And I think there is an incredible reality. Our lives are jam-packed full. We run on a currency called busyness. Uh, Depending on how busy we are gives us different levels of justification. You know, like, uh, how good am I doing at my job? Well, it's based on how busy I am. Hey, how are you? Yeah, great. Busy, but I'm good. What out of our lives do we need to take out? What out of our lives do we need to make space? If we're to excel, in uh, the things that God has given us. If we are to move into a closeness of a relationship with God, that requires us to invest time. Time is probably the most expensive commodity. What areas of our lives are we doing to actually make that come into being? Guys, if you wanna see this, if you wanna see this, then I wanna encourage you to begin to make space. I wanna finally just finish off with a prophetic word, um, that a prophetic dream that Edna had uh, a little while back. And she said that there was a, a group of us from church and uh, we were at the, the, the in Sutton Coalfield uh, and we were kind of thereabouts uh, on uh, the, the bottom of uh, uh, Trinity Hill. And so the, the, the top end essentially of Sutton uh, by McDonald's, if you're uh, confused by where that is. And she said suddenly she turned around and she could see this river that was flowing up back up towards Mere Green. But the weird thing was that the river wasn't flowing downhill but in fact the river was flowing up and up and up and she was so struck by the fact that the river was doing the wrong thing instead of it coming down it was going up and as a church we began uh, that the group of people that were there we began to say do you know what let's follow this let's see where it goes Uh, and so as we did we began to walk and the direction was to walk towards Mia Green and there's this kind of she got this just sense that that God is taking us to something new and the spiritual side of something that is utterly impossible 
is coming into being. The idea of a river going uphill, again, is impossible. Yet, with God on our side, all things are possible. And for us as a church, as we're looking at this, who'd have ever thought three years ago that we'd have the amount of people we have? Who'd have thought three years ago that in this current place, our services are reaching the amount of people that they are? Who'd have thought? And this isn't through any form of engineering on our behalf, but God's doing something. So guys, it is great to be excited by where we are, but we are not to grow comfortable in the here and now. And God is already bringing people back. So to come back to that original vision statement, as this is a church, this idea of having a place that people can feel that they can call home, God is already awakening an awareness in people's hearts to seek God in this moment of anxiety, worry, fear and depression. People are turning to God. And as a church, as we prepare our hearts, as we prepare ourselves, as we make space in our lives to make it possible for this to happen. And as we pray, church, I believe God is going to do something incredible through you as an individual in the family and the community where he has placed you and us as a church as we begin to look to see where he is taking us he has got good things ahead and i don't know about you but i feel just an incredible sense of excitement god what are you doing this is an adventure i want to join you in so guys at home i just want to invite you we do this at the end of most of our services these days I just want to invite you just to put out your hands and in doing so you're saying yes Lord I want what you've got and as we do we're asking that God again would fill us afresh with his Holy Spirit that he would flush out all that is not him that we would be filled with his power that we would be filled with his spirit that he would meet us that he would speak to us where we are so let's just put our hands out i'm going to give a couple of seconds of silence and then i'm just going to pray a simple prayer as we invite god by the power of his spirit to bring into fruition everything that he has said here let's pray Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us afresh this morning, here in this place? Lord, you said that you've equipped us for such a time as this. Now by your Spirit, fill us up and send us out to be your hands, to be your feet, to be your mouthpiece in the places you have placed us. We ask this in your precious name. Amen.
the lyrics of this song. He calleth out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, where faith will stand. Lord, we've been talking today about going out into the unknown, to where we may fail if we're on our own, but actually with you, we're stronger than ever. May your spirit lead us where our trust is without borders. Lord, thank you that you are leading us on this journey together as a church with our community. And Lord, just may you give us wisdom, may you give us faith, may we trust you the whole way through. We're so excited to see what is to come. So that brings us to the end of our service. Thank you so much for joining us, for the opportunity to come together and worship with you and experience church like this. For those who are watching live and would like to join our after church Zoom call, the details of this will be in the Facebook comments. This is open to anyone. If you are new or if you aren't, we invite you to join us and say hello. So let's pray to close and reflect on everything that we've heard this morning. Dear God, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your name. Thank you that you gave us a foundation to build our lives upon. That by your might, Jesus was raised from the grave, paving the way for us to have new life with you. Thank you that you have a plan and that you made a way. May your love and grace continue to guide us in everything that we do, today and in the week ahead. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.